Bridge 3, Over Time Isaiah and the other prophets continued speaking God's word to the people of Judah. Judah was taken into ba the Babylonian captivity for a 70-year period. After those 70 years, the people came back to the land. Again, the prophets challenged them to seek the Lord and obey him. Unfortunately, they didn't listen. The prophetic warnings were silenced for a period of 400 years. Then another man came on the scene. He ate and dressed like Elijah. He sounded like a prophet. But people weren't sure who he really was. His name was John the Baptist. Chapter 4 The Saving Lamb, John 1 The Apostle John began his gospel with a prologue, verse 1 to 18. The rest of his chapter is centered around four days in Jesus' early life and ministry. These four days surround his baptism and the initial formation of this, his disciples. In this chapter, we will focus our attention on the first three days. Through a study of these three days, we will be introduced to the Lamb of God. Day 1. John the Baptist testified about himself. Chapter 1, 19-28. On the first day, the Levites came to John the Baptist with a question about his identity. Their question was, Who are you? Verse 19. John the Baptist answered by telling them who he was not. I am not the Christ. Verse 20. By this he was telling them that he knew that he was not the long-awaited Messiah. But his answer did not satisfy them. They still wanted to explore this question further. They remembered what the prophet Malachi had promised. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Malachi 4.5 They had noticed that there were similarities in John the Baptist's dress and diet to what they had heard and read about Elijah. So they asked John the Baptist if he was Elijah. He answered, I am not. Verse 21 Finally, they had a third possible suggestion for John the Baptist. Long ago, Moses had written these words. The Lord said to me, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell them everything I command him. Deuteronomy 18.18 18. So they asked him, Are you the prophet? One more time, John the Baptist answered by saying, No. So the Levites tried again. Who are you? They had been sent to find out the answer, and they were not going to leave until they had it. John simply quoted the prophet Isaiah's words, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, verse 23. Satisfied or not, the Levites had their answer, so they left. Then the Pharisees came and questioned him. Their question was, Why do you baptize, verse 25? John the Baptist answered by telling them something that he was in the middle of discovering himself. I baptize with water. Among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me. I am not worthy to untie his sandals. In other words, John the Baptist knew that the Messiah was coming. In fact, he knew that the Messiah was standing among them, but no one had yet recognized who the Messiah was. What John knew was that the Messiah would come after him. He also knew that the Messiah would be much more important than he was. At this point, the Apostle John identifies the location of John the Baptist's ministry. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. Verse 28, the Apostle John was reporting history. He was not making up stories. His story was reported in the context of a specific geographical location. This location can still be found on any map of the area. Day 2 John the Baptist testified about Jesus. Chapter 1, verse 29 to 31 On the second day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him. Then he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. John the Baptist was the son of a priestly family. Both his mother and father 
were priestly descendants, Luke 1, 5. As a result, he would have been very familiar with animal sacrifices. He would have heard the story of Abraham and Isaac. He would have known the story of Moses and the Passover. And yes, he would have been familiar with the suffering servant prophecy of Isaiah. These would have been the stories that John the Baptist grew up on. So when John the Baptist introduced Jesus to the people as the Lamb of God, his words were pregnant with meaning. John the Baptist was saying that this man would be the substitute for Isaac. This man would be the Passover sacrifice for firstborns. And this man would be the suffering servant. John the Baptist also knew the regulations that were set forth for the Day of Atonement, Leviticus 16. On that day, Aaron would choose two goats. The first goat would be sacrificed to the Lord. The second goat would be a scapegoat. The law clearly stated what Aaron would do next. He is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess it over all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the desert in care of a man appointed for the task. The goat will carry on itself all their sins to a solitary place, and the man shall release it in the desert. Leviticus 16, 21 and 22. When John the Baptist said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, John 1, 29, he was saying that Jesus would do for the world what the scapegoat did for the people of Israel. At this point, John the Baptist referred back to what he had said the day before. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. John 1.30 John the Baptist identified Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus was the fulfillment of what he had spoken. Jesus would come after John. This was a chronological statement. Jesus' ministry would start just about the time that John's ministry would finish. Jesus would surpass John. This was a value statement. Jesus would do miracles. Jesus would raise the dead. Jesus would draw great crowds of people. His ministry would be greater than John's. Jesus was before John. This was a revealing statement. Jesus is God. As God, Jesus existed from the beginning. This was how John the Baptist could say that Jesus was before him. Did you catch John's confession? John did not recognize Jesus at first. He will soon tell us how he came to know who Jesus was, but for now, John simply is letting us know that he was sent to reveal someone to Israel who at first, John did not even know himself. The Apostle John did not give us the story about Jesus' baptism that we find in the Synoptic Gospels. He simply recorded John the Baptist's testimony about the baptism of Jesus. John the Baptist recalled, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. Verse 32. That was the sign that John had been told to look for. When he saw that happen, then he knew who Jesus was. Jesus is the Son of God. Day 3. John the Baptist testified about Jesus. John 1, 35-42. On the third day, John the Baptist confirmed his testimony about Jesus. John was continuing his ministry. He was there by the river with two of his disciples. Their names were Andrew and Simon. John saw Jesus passing by and said to his disciples, Look, the Lamb of God. There are at least two possibilities here. One possibility is that Andrew and Simon had not been there the day before, and that John the Baptist was telling them what they had missed. The other possibility is that Andrew and Simon had been part of the crowd the day before. They had heard John the Baptist greet Jesus with the words, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This was simply an affirmation of what had been stated the day before. 
Sometimes we need to hear something more than once in order for it to make sense to us. In either event, John the Baptist's words had an imp impact on Andrew and Simon. When they heard John's words, they decided to follow Jesus. That is what John had wanted them to do. They finally understood the message. If John, if Jesus is the Lamb of God, then we should all follow him. That is the message of John's gospel. Jesus noticed that they were following him, but he did not want to take anything for granted. He asked them, what do you want? Verse 38. They answered that they wanted to see where Jesus was staying. Jesus told them to come and you will see. Verse 39. So they spent the day with him. Most likely Jesus did not take them to where he was staying right away. For Jesus was much more interested in developing these men as followers than of showing them his quarters. Andrew had heard John the Baptist's testimony about Jesus. Then he spent some time with Jesus. So he went and found his brother Simon and told him about Jesus. This is an example of what happens to people who become aware of who Jesus is. First they hear about him from someone who knows him. Then they get to know him for themselves. Finally, they want to tell their family and friends about the one they have met. When Simon came to know Jesus, Jesus changed his name. Until now, he had been known as Simon. From now on, he would be known as Peter. This name means rock. Have you ever noticed? We don't just throw our garbage out onto the street. We expect someone to come and take it away. This is also true spiritually. He, Jesus, appeared so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 1, 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5. H.G. Johnson wrote these words. Look to the Lamb of God. If you from sin are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. He to redeem you died on Calvary. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. For he alone is able to save you. Look to the Lamb of God. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the saving Lamb. He takes away our sin.